welcome to the History of Science in Oxford virtual tour. We will travel back in time to see how the first scientific discoveries were made and, and how science is done today. We are standing in front of this statue, which is known as homage to Dr. Mirabilis, but hardly anyone knows who Dr. Mirabilis was. Roger Bacon, who is often celebrated as the first British experimental scientist. He was a Franciscan monk and he studied at lectured in Oxford. He is known to have developed um, uh, the magnifying glass uh, to describe the formula of gunpowder in Europe, to be the first European to describe it. Uh, he is also famous for, for his works in optics and, and the retraction of light and the rainbow. And in his major work, he predicted cars and aircraft and even suggested that the Earth was not flat and could be circumnavigated. Bacon's study and observatory were above the gateway um, of the Foley Bridge um, and this is um, a millery sphere and Bacon is often um, depicted with this sphere in his arms um, and his most famous sculpture is situated in the Oxford Museum of Natural History and we are going to see it very soon. And on one of the walls of the Westgate Centre, you can see what Oxford's Franciscan friar looked like. It was a huge, huge area and the archaeological excavations which happened a few years ago here discovered a lot of amazing things. Um, and actually uh, where Sainsbury's is now, um, in the basement of Sainsbury's, um, um, if you're on good terms with the manager apparently, you will be able to see um, an ancient bit of the original column from this uh, Franciscan friary. And these are the ruins of that Franciscan monastery, yeah. which could be seen at Sainsbury's, and apparently Marks and Spencer also had its own bit. Yeah. I can't recall if it's upstairs or downstairs, but it's in the pillar or post. Has it got like glass around it? Thank you. It's a real shame that Franciscan Priory does not exist anymore and has been replaced by the Westgate Center. But next time you are leaving it, when you are leaving it through the Sainsbury's exit, pay attention that the lane to your right is called Roger Bacon Lane. Oxford University had a long tradition uh, of um, uh, doing experimentation um, and teaching science but there was not no degrees which students and fellows uh, could take uh, apart from medicine so the museum of natural history uh, was built not only as a museum to host the natural sciences collection but also as a sort of umbrella um, uh, to have all the science degrees under one roof in the literary and figurative meaning of this word and and um, professor of medicine Auckland uh, uh, led this campaign So here, inside the Oxford Museum of Natural History, we can see scientists and philosophers uh, around. And here is Roger Bacon, who holds an astrolabe, which points out to his scientific studies. And in the other corner, there is Darwin. And here is Charles Darwin's uh, sculpture. And the museum is known for hosting the evolution debate uh, on the 30th of June, 1816. So the museum was designed as an educational space. So you can see that 
columns uh, are all made from different stones, different rocks, and you can also see what type of rock and from which region they were brought here. Also, all those bits uh, are based on real plants from um, the botanic gardens, and, and uh, this is where geologists and botanists uh, came to study. where different departments and lecture rooms were situated according to different disciplines. Department of Medicine lecture room, Department of Medicine instrument room, and many others. Thank you. So Charles Darwin was not a participant in the debate himself um, and when the debate became very heated um, uh, Bishop Wilberforce asked, uh, excuse me sir, Henry Huxley, um, is this your grandmother or grandfather uh, who descended from an ape? And then Huxley replied, well I would prefer my ancestors uh, to descend from an ape rather than from someone who doesn't respect science. And one of the most iconic specimens held by the museum is the dodo. This is the only surviving dodo of tissue remains in the world. And also the most complete remains of a single dodo anywhere in the world. So you may know the history of dodo. So these are birds which couldn't fly because they were too heavy, like 20 kilos. And uh, when the Dutch sailors came to the islets of them, Mauritius, they also brought some dogs, cats with them, so basically the birds became extinct in the end. So you may also recognize it by Lewis Carroll's Dodo in the book because uh, the book's character looks very similar like this. But you also may be interested um, in learning that uh, uh, the real name of Lewis Carroll was Dodgson and he had a stem and when he introduced himself he was saying Dodo do, do, Dodgson. So Dodo is a sort of himself in the book too, possibly inspired by this bird. And here is another hidden gem, not so hidden anymore. Uh, this is the first scientifically described dinosaur in the world, to be exact, part of the dinosaur of what we know as the jawbone. Actually, when um, the first uh, bones were found, uh, um, scientists believed that they are either parts of giants described in the Bible, uh, or perhaps uh, bits of dragons, um, and uh, only later, uh, at the beginning of the 19th century, William Buckland, uh, a scholar at Oxford University, he scientifically described um, uh, and, uh, this bit and called uh, um, uh, it Megalosaurus. So this is now known as Megalosaurus Bucklandium. William Buckland was quite eccentric. So he was known for uh, eating all the possible species. Um, his menu sometimes reminded Noah's Ark uh, and uh, uh, he was also known as someone who had eaten uh, a heart of the king when he was invited as a guest to his friend. Uh, um, uh, the family uh, precious thing was shown that was a heart of um, Louis XIV and William Buckland uh, shouted that never ever in his life he tried uh, the king's heart and before everyone uh, became aware um, he ate it. So in front of the museum you can see the plaque which says that here are replicas of Megalosaurus footsteps which are 168 million years old and they were found in Oxfordshire in the same way as bones of Megalosaurus which is translated as giant lizard were also found uh, nearby in Stonesfield.
And this is Dorothy Crawford Hodgkin. She still remains uh, the only British female Nobel Prize winner in science. Um, and she worked in the basement of Natural History Museum and her bust is the only representation of a female scholar um, in this place. And here is the Abbott's Kitchen. This is an early chemistry laboratory based on the Abbott's Kitchen at Glastonbury Abbey, a medieval 14th century octagonal building that served as the kitchen at the Abbey. Chemistry was recognized as a discipline at Oxford University now when the laboratory was constructed and it was attached to the Oxford University Museum of Natural History in 1860. It is still part of the Oxford University Chemistry Department and this area at the moment where you can see the former Radcliffe Science Library is going to be a new college which is going to be open next year uh, 2021 and is going to be called uh, Rubin College. So Radcliffe Science Library does not exist anymore and uh, uh, it will be the place of college number 39 and the head of the college will be Professor Leonel Tarasenka who used to be head of engineering department. Uh, the college will be focused on machine learning, artificial intelligence and climate change. And across the road where the MPLS division offices are uh, this is where the crystallography laboratories were. This is where Margaret Thatcher was also doing her experiments as a student um, and um, allegedly Dorothy Hodgkin was her tutor. They were both affiliated with Somerville College um, and as you will be aware, Mary Somerville, after whom the college was named, uh, she was a Scottish uh, science writer and a polymath. She did mathematics, astronomy, and when she died, the obituary said that there could be dispute who the king of science was at that time, but there was no doubt that the queen of science should be considered Mary Somerville. In front of the inorganic chemistry department, we can see the plaque devoted to Dorothy Crawford Hodgkin. Crawford is her maiden name. Uh, she was awarded the Nobel Prize uh, uh, for determining the structure of penicillin and solving the structure of vitamin B12. Uh, and um, the local newspaper uh, had a notorious uh, title about her achievement when saying that uh, uh, the Oxford housewife won a Nobel Prize. She had three children by that time already. Please pay attention. On the form of the plaque, um, it's hexagon and it reminds us of the hexagonal molecular structure. And next Wednesday, we will find out how Wadham College, uh, Oxford, is related to the origin of Royal Society in London. The room which we can see from here is known as the Royal Society room.